Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Mishmash Monday, and uh, we got a lot to get to. So uh, the first uh, segment, I promised I would show you uh, what I picked up at the show. So let's go check yeah, that first out. First off, quick. my friend and uh, mentor Dan Semmel, he always brings down some stuff to show, and and sometimes when he gets a, a like a box full of extras that maybe he's uh, kind of getting rid of some room, he brings some some stuff over and 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 gives it to me and, I, and I'm, I'm so appreciative of it but this was really interesting these are stamped out uh, tools and you've uh, you might have seen these before they used to come with bicycles things like that but i'm always looking for something that i thought would be a good design if you wanted to make today here's what's interesting about this one here you can see it's the same tool but one is longer than the other so this one was cut down maybe for a shorter tool but um, I still think that there's a market for something like this today. If you could, if you could just get the right idea, and that's what I'm always looking for. So he brought these in. He brought me a box of dowel pins. If you, uh, we're going to be doing a project with some dowel pins, and if you've never seen what they are, how they use these are great. And uh, this and a block of metal, you can make up all kinds of jigs, and and they're quite expensive when you buy them. So when you can find them at a, at a good price, you pick them up. But uh, he knows I collect jigs, uh, hacksaws. I have quite an extensive collection, and and he, and this is one I've never seen. And he he said. Uh, he brought this in to give to me and he said uh, add this to your collection now It's funny because I'm looking at this and and I'm I have to tell you uh, Take a look at this and you could see because even even Dan and I were talking you know whether it was a casting a forging Blacksmith made I, I mean this there's, there's a lot going on here. Okay, and it's it's heavy duty It's very rigid, which is uh, you know very desirable in a hacksaw and uh, You could see if you take a good look you know, this is telltale about if it's machined or not, you know, the edges, but it's really well made by, and I just don't know if, uh, if you think it was made by a, a one-off blacksmith or you think this was something, look how nice these are spaced nicely apart. They're all countersunk to the same depth, you know, so whoever did, it's, it's nice. And I just, you know, in the comments, if, let me know what you think this is. Do you think it was a, uh. Do you think it was a kind of a one-off piece or or do you think it was more a blacksmith made or you know have you ever seen anything like it it's quite comfortable in the hand and but uh you know i don't see any real forging mark you know casting marks where it would be something or and it's very uh, it feels like a duck to, i thought it was a horseshoe at first but it's very uh, very interesting let me know what you think about this or where you think the uh, origins of it okay i'm gonna go through real quick what i picked up uh, first of all i got these three boxes of uh lumber crayons if you've never used these before uh they they're really good they're good for marking you know a, you know rough lumber things like that they're good for marking metal uh rubber things like that there it's a, it's a basically it's a heavy duty crayon it comes it's usually yellow in, in color and they do last you know through weather and things like that and these are nice to have so i picked next these up you right you might remember this from a couple shows ago when i let it go and i was, I was thinking about it so i should have bought that i only paid like five bucks for this thing but this is heavy duty and it's about i guess about 13 14 inches long it's it's heavy duty but uh, it never closed all the way. So, but it's smooth and the threads are good and everything. So I said, you know what? This will be good maybe for when we do a clam challenge. This would be a great surface to paint on, right? Because, you know, you can make this nice and silver polish. And then all this is, you know, good for color. So I picked this up, uh, you know, whether or not I'll use it. I just thought it was pretty cool. Uh, next up, you know, I can't get enough of these small crowbars. You know, they're all, a lot of them are different the way they're bent and stuff. This one just had nice lines to it. So I, I bought it. Uh, a file handle, you know, this was $6. I picked up the file handle with the file in it, the round file. But... Uh, you know about these file handles, you know, these, they're getting more and more scarce and hard to find. So when you do see them, and this one's a nice shape, original paint on it and stuff, pick that up. Then I picked this up. This is the first item I bought. This is pretty cool. A machinist made this screwdriver and, uh, except for a little mark here, the knurling is just about perfect. And, uh, it was, you could see where it went into the lathe. And it's all from one solid piece of, of a, a good steel. It's it's heavier than cold roll, but I don't know what it is. And he did a nice job on the blade. So I said, you know, it's got a little rust from sitting, but I'll fix this up. And uh, it's it's a, it feels really nice in the hand. And like I said, the knurling is really nice. So uh, we'll work on that one. That's an easy job. I picked up, uh, I couldn't let these go, you know. They were like uh, $4 each and... 
And again, when you look at these, these type of old wrench, I don't even know who makes them, but the jaws are in great shape. It's not banged on in the back. They're all smooth, you know, works beautiful. And the handles, they're not cracked and in good shape. So I just, I, I hate to see that stuff just sit there, you know, for four bucks a piece. It's a nice restoration. Next up from Chris, I got the last two items. I got the, well, I picked up this nice Miller's Falls 300. You could see it on, I don't know if you can make it, there you go. You see that, Miller's Falls number 300. And uh, this is an interesting vise. Has I don't even know what the deal is, whether this came on here or not, but it's got this spins on. It's uh, it's a regular, uh, it's kind of a stationary vise, but it's it's cute. You know, it's small, it's nice, and when this is done up properly, it'll look nice sitting on a mantle or whatever. The jaws are in great shape. It looks like a, a, a useful little vise. And we were trying to figure out how this would work, if this would slip into something that to you know, hold it down or whatever, but interesting. Now, vice. speaking of vices, I, this was $10 and, uh, I just, you know, something I saw this again last time and it's rough, right? I mean, it's a little town number 112, is it? Yeah. 112. I don't have one of these. Remember the last one I did was a 25, but, uh, this one's, it's in good shape. It's in really good shape, but it's, it's really, it's kind of like just rusty, but I mean, it's not beat on the jaws. Look at the jaws. They're, they're clean and straight and it's missing this part here, which I like because I like to, uh, I won't have to knock off the old one to, uh, to, to do this up. So I don't know. I, I, I like when you can do a before and after on a vice and it comes out real nice. So that'll be good. Next product. up, I picked up this rigid, it's a, uh, 24 inch aluminum or as my buddies across the pond say aluminium and it's a 24 inch and and these things um especially rigid they're really expensive but they are so good i mean if you, most plumbers today this is what they're using they're not going with the, the the heavy cast iron ones anymore because uh but it's it's solid and uh it's so lightweight if you've never seen an aluminum pipe wrench before you're you're in for a treat but um I don't know, this is maybe some other kind of alloy or I don't know if it's steel on top, but this will be really a nice cleanup. I, I had visions of polishing this out because it's aluminum. I always been looking for one. They do run a lot of money. This one was 20 bucks. So it's, uh, you know, even even used, they're not cheap, but it should be a, a nice project for the okay, show. Okay, last up, I bought this and this was the most expensive item I bought. I paid $30 for this and uh, you say, what? did you do what did you do and uh as you can see what it is it's a uh it's a lawnmower you see an old-fashioned push lawnmower but um i believe this was a salesman sample now it's missing the wood roller back here it's missing the little steel blade uh blade that goes over there the iron they call that some kind of iron and it's missing the handle obviously now as a wood turner it's just an excuse to get on the lathe and knock those pieces out so that's always a joy but um the funny thing is that i went on i went looking on this and i i kind of have a good eye for for stuff and i i always have i have stuff that is kind of collectible or whatever but i just like certain things you know and this is uh, one of those things I said, well, wow, that's pretty cool. It's like a salesman sample. I, I think it was kind of too well built to be a toy. So um, look up on on uh, eBay or look up on Google. Just look up a salesman sample lawnmower and uh, antique and these things go for big money. But uh, I just thought it'd be something interesting to uh, to put back together and to make those parts. Okay, let's show. start off with a couple projects. Uh, the first one here, Dan picked this up. And uh, what it is, it looks like, uh, it looks almost like even Dan was saying that it was maybe a shop made project for somebody. And uh, what it is, it's like a little slap hammer uh, punch, maybe, uh, a set. And um, the thing is that because the tip wasn't really hardened well, you could see it mushed down a little bit. So um, it's got nice knurling on it. It's made of steel and the back is a little messed up. So. Uh, Dan wanted, you know, just to, we're going to just try and redo this tip, get it back to a little bit and uh, get it back to somewhat sharp. We don't want to make it too sharp that it becomes like a needle. And the, this was made for like probably brass or something like that or jewelers, but he didn't want it cleaned up. Dan, Dan likes the original look of it. And I'm, I was dying because I was like saying, oh God, I can get those neurals nice and clean and polish it. And he's like, no, I like it just the way it is. So we're just going to do the tip 
and the back. One of the so drawbacks of having a small lathe is I can't fit this into the the chuck to hold this and do it on the lathe, so I'm gonna have to do it by hand. When you do it by hand, you know, um, you, you take a chance, you gotta be real careful. So the best thing to do is to come over to the grinder, which we're gonna use, and uh, to, while it's off, to experiment in different ways of holding this angle to get it straight and to see if you could spin it without making any uh, diversions to the uh, to the back. Now of the you tool. can see here by doing it uh, kind of a, a dry run without it running, I could hold my finger against the fence here, and I could bring this around, get the proper angle that I want, and spin it and feed it into the stone, and then do it that way, and uh, and that should give us a nice tip. Let's try that. Okay, now that we have the front pretty nice, uh, for the back, what we could do is um, we could chuck this up into a power drill, this part here, and use this as a, a holder and spin this and get this nice and rounded off and fix that, uh, that damage back here. So let's try that. Okay, so we finished Dan's little slap punch, and you can see here the tip is nice and, and uh, a nice, not super sharp, but sharp enough to do anything that this uh, punch was made to do. And we got rid of all those dings in the back, made it nice. I could have polished it out, but I didn't. He wants it original looking, so there we go. So uh, another project done. Let's see what else okay, we Okay, next up, what do you say we try this uh, screwdriver out, this one? Now, you see here? Look at that. You know, it's some deep pitting in here. Uh, we got a little damage over here, pitting, you know, deep pitting, a little damage here, and uh, the back looks kind of scongeal, right? And so let's see what we can do. You know, I, there's nothing I could do about this little knurling spot here, but the rest of it's nice, and let's just make this nice, a good user screwdriver. Okay, here we are at the post wire brush. Look how nice that knurling came out. Again, you have to hit it with the wire brush at an angle to make sure you get in those grooves and uh, just beautiful, right? Now we're going to hit this with the coarse belt sander because uh, we got to get really deep in there to get rid of that. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what the screwdriver looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Uh... This is really a satisfying project, wasn't it? I mean, look at this now. Remember what it looked like before with the uh, the pitting and everything, and, and I was able to grind all that out, and then, you know, obviously make a, uh, a new profile up front, but nice tip, and follow the original design that he had had. This is a tribute to the unknown machinist, you know, those guys that... Uh, knock out work every day and, you know, don't sign it, and they don't consider themselves artists and stuff. These are just... You know, that's a real tribute to the working machinist, this one. And, and I love this screwdriver. And I only wish you could be here to feel how it feels in the hand. And it's just a beauty. And and uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's see what else we got. Okay, last up, we're going to be shutting down the shop for tonight. Uh, I want to ask you a quick question. Um, whenever you're using cold cuts or cheese from a package, you know, like you get at the supermarket, uh, when you open up the package to make an omelet or something like that, and you have the slices of cheese or cold cuts, do you ever put one in your mouth I, <laughs> before, even though you're going to be eating it in about four minutes whenever the meal's done, do you ever just take one right off the out of the package and stick in your mouth? Or is that just a, a New York thing? Because uh, everybody I know here, we can't can't resist taking a slice in your mouth while you're making a, your dinner or whatever. Uh, I hope you have a nice Labor Day. Thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, take care now. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.